Father Damien. It was the year 1863 in Paris. The lights of a monastery gleamed through the rain of a stormy night. Behind one window, in a room lit by a single candle and a flickering fire, sat the superior general of the Order of Sacred Hawks. His secretary, Father Pierre, stood before him. There's a young man outside to see you. On a night like this? Yes, he, uh, he seems very, very interesting. And what is his name, Pierre? Oh, I can tell you that from his letter. I have it right here. Uh, Joseph de Vester, called Damien. Let me see the letter. I didn't want to bother you with it. It's a very poorly written letter. Mm, let me see. Twenty-five years old. Born on a farm outside Tremloo, a village in Belgium. But did you ever see such atrocious Latin? Well, perhaps we should talk with this lad, Pierre. He's come a long way in such a stormy night. Oh, all right. But you're much too busy with important matters to waste your time on every student who comes along. Very well, young man. You may come in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well? I'm sorry to bother your grace, but I want very much to serve in Hawaii as a missionary. Oh, why didn't you take this up with your superior at the Picpus house? Oh, I tried, but... Well, uh, he... he didn't seem to understand. Mm. I'm afraid I'll have to take this up with your superior. Of course. Something must be done. I'm going to suggest a penalty for this lack of discipline. You'll be sentenced to exile, to loneliness, and to years of hard labor. As a missionary in Hawaii... Soon, a little group of nuns and priests, cooped up in close quarters, sailed from Bremerhaven on a voyage that kept them at sea for five months and took them more than halfway around the world. Then one day, the welcome peaks of Hawaii rose out of the blue Pacific, and they landed in a strange new world. There are a few things that puzzle me, Father Damien. Perhaps, first of all, should I call you Father? Well, Your Excellency, I... I haven't been ordained, but uh, in our order, we're allowed to use the title. Your superior understood that I needed missionaries who could perform all the duties of priests. Oh, but I shall become a priest, Your Excellency. Well, I can't send you back, I'm afraid. And perhaps, as you say, you shall become a priest. A few months later, Damien stood before the altar of the cathedral to celebrate Mass for the first time as a priest. Well, Father Damien, no one can dispute your right to the title now. Thank you, Your Excellency. I, uh, I have a parish that needs a missionary right away. Oh, I'll go at once. It's not an easy job. There's been no priest in Puno for a number of years. There are many good Christians there, but you'll find many others who hold to the old heathen ways. They need the fear of God for their own salvation. Yes, but we must tell them of the rewards of God's will as well as the punishments. But I think you'll learn, Damien. I'm sure you'll be a good priest, my son. An excellent priest. Father Damien's parish was a large, remote area of mountains and jungles and steaming craters of smoking volcanoes. By day and night, he traveled from one end to the other, sometimes alone, sometimes with native guides. In every town of any size, Damien dreamed of building a church or chapel. He wrote letter after letter to Bishop Magre, pleading for lumber. And then one day... Come on, men. Let's see how many of these planks we can get up before dark. All together now, let's slip this one in place. Ready? One. Two. Three. There. Huh. Well, how's the rock splitting coming, Matolo? It, it be plenty hard, Father. A rock no no split like you say. Me no so strong like you. <laughs> oh, I'm not so strong, Matolo. Just stubborn. Now, let me have that hammer and... Say, what was that? Well, what's the matter? Why has everyone stopped working? 
Listen, Father. You know, hear something? Yes. It sounds like a drum. Ah, a drum of wind god. They are feast to wind god up in hill. I see. Well, you tell your people, tell everyone in the village, that when our church is finished, we'll have the greatest feast they've ever seen. Even if we have to use every bit of my supplies. Oh, good. We tell everyone. And as for that drum, give me that hammer, and I'll show you how to drown it out. Slowly through the years, Damien built his churches and won the people away from ignorance and superstition. He was happy in his work and in his new home. A year later, at the time of the consecration of a new church, Bishop Maigret called priests from all over the islands to attend. At the end of the day's celebration, the bishop spoke. God has been good to us in our work, and this is a great day of happiness. But there is one sorrow in my heart as I think of our island, and that is the sorrow of Molokai and its leper colony. Its pitiful people are as dear to God as any others. I, I don't know what to say. I can't find words. Your Excellency, I would like to go to Molokai. Did you know, Father Damien, that priests have visited Molokai before from time to time and the government has made new rules? From now on, anyone who becomes a resident of Molokai must stay there, perhaps for the rest of his life. I know that, Your Excellency. Even your church does not command such a sacrifice. Your Excellency... Please, let me be the one to go. Within an hour, Damien and his bishop sailed for Honolulu. In the harbor there, they found a leper ship ready to cast off for Molokai. I'll go at once, Your Excellency. But, Damien, you don't have your belongings. I have my breviary, Your Excellency. Well, perhaps it's best to decide quickly. Let's be off. I'll see you on your way to your new parish. Damien and Bishop Maigret sailed on the ship of despair. Listen to the heartbreaking cries of farewell as the doomed ones on board called out for the last time to loved ones ashore. Then came the silence of misery. One of the passengers aboard was a health official on an inspection trip. So you think you've seen leprosy, do you, Father? Yes, some of the people in my parish were lepers. But I warn you, you've never seen anything like Molokai. Hundreds of them all rotting away. Ah. They'd all be better off dead. That's not for their fellow men to say, Lieutenant. It's not as if you could do anything for them. I can bring them the comfort of faith. Even police and soldiers can't do much with lepers. All they have to do is reach out and touch you, and it's worse than facing a man with a gun. Well, um, how do they keep any kind of order there? Oh, they make one of the lepers a kind of temporary superintendent. But no one lasts long on Molokai. About three or four years on the average. Well, I expect to be there for a good long time. You're foolish to bother yourself, Father. Better to leave things as they are. The government wants no trouble from the church or from anyone else. I know. As long as the lepers are kept out of sight and it doesn't cost too much, the government will be satisfied. Now, be reasonable, Father. It's always been this way. Why, back in the Middle Ages, as soon as anyone got leprosy, he was declared officially dead. They even read the funeral service. Lepers weren't allowed on the streets. And wherever they went, they had to carry a ratchet to warn people away from them. Yes, that's true. But don't forget, the monks established leper homes for them. Yes, and just kept their misery alive for a little longer. I tell you, there's nothing you can do. Perhaps we can. On Moroka? You just wait and see. Never dreamed there was a place on earth like this. The houses aren't even fit for pigsties. And the people, poor souls. So far gone, they cursed and jeered us. I told you all they want is to be left alone. <laughs> Damien, I, I feel weak. I feel faint. Well, you shouldn't have come ashore with me, Your Excellency. You're ill. Come on, we've got to get back to the ship. Go ahead, Your Excellency. Wait. Under these conditions, there's nothing you can accomplish here, Damien. It's hopeless. 
What do you mean? You may as well come back with us. There's nothing anyone can do here. We'll have to get aboard in a hurry. The ship's ready to sail. And come along, Damien, perhaps... Uh, perhaps some other time. Do you command me to go, Your Excellency? Command you? No. No, but you're free to change your mind. Then I'll stay. I came here to help. We've got to hurry. Now, come on. I'm leaving. There's not even a place for you to stay, Damien. You can't sleep in one of those leper huts. There's a tree on the hill there, Your Excellency. Its branches will give me a roof. I'll find some way to manage. You'll find nothing but a grave, Father. That's all Molokai is, a graveyard. Well, a man finds but one grave. If this is mine, so be it. Well, have it your own way, then. But we've got to go. You'd better hurry, Your Excellency. Very well, my son. Only the will of God could command you to stay here. His will be done. Remember me in your prayers... I'll remember you every day, morning and night. God bless you, Damien. Father Damien stood on the shore and looked out over the gray and dreary sea. In a glance behind him, he saw the twisted forms of two lepers feebly digging a shallow trench in the graveyard. Ahead of him, he saw the ship fading off from the harbor, leaving him behind, alone, on Molokai. Father Damien turned and looked over the island, which was now his home, his prison. Then he went to the little wooden chapel. He soon discovered he was being watched by a few timid lepers. Welcome, my children. No, no, don't go away. What is it you do, Father? Why, I'm... I'm cleaning out our church. It needs it, doesn't it? You here? you going to stay, Father? Why, yes. I'm going to be your priest. Others have come, but they no stay. Well, I expect to stay. So we must get our church fixed up. Would you like to help me? What do I do, Father? Well, I'll need a hammer and some nails. Uh, do you think you could get them for me? This I can do. What do you have there? We bring fruit, Father. Fruit to leave for you to eat. Well, I am hungry. Come, let's sit down and eat together. You no can eat with us, Father. Plenty danger you catch. We go. We come back. Oh, no, no, no. No, stay right there. Some people's here no like white man, Father. No like priest. Well, maybe we can change that. Here, let's divide this. Don't turn away. But, but my face, all the time, people turn away. We're going to be together for a long time. So we'd better get used to the way we look. The ringing of the church bells from the little chapel soon became a familiar sound over the island of Molokai. And so did the sound of hammering as Damien made coffins for the funerals that took place almost daily on Molokai. Since you come, Father, we have flowers in church, prayers to God. It no seems so sad to die in Molokai. No, it should not be sad, Milani. It's the end of all our suffering and misery. It's only going home. Going home. Yes. It is so long since I see my home. Well, let's get to work. Uh, hand me some more boards, Kalea. But, Father, why here you work building coffins? Why you no know build house to live in? Oh, there's plenty of time for that, Kalea. I have the place all picked out. Right over there under the hill. Well, that right by graveyard, Father. Must be more better place. No, no, that's the right place, Kalea. Between the church and the graveyard. I won't have to travel far to be near all my friends. But you must listen to me. 
We must have lumber. I didn't come all the way back to Honolulu for nothing. Well, Father, if you'll just make out a report. A report? A written report. Then I'll see that it comes to the attention of the proper authority. Very well. If you want a written report, I'll write it here and now. No, you can bring it tomorrow. I can't wait until tomorrow. But, Father, these matters must be handled in an orderly fashion. I'm sorry, sir, but if necessary, I'm prepared to handle this in a disorderly fashion. I've been sent from one clerk to another for days. Your attitude is hardly worthy of your calling, Father. Any other attitude would be unworthy, sir. I trust I won't have to call your conduct to the attention of your bishop. You may do what you like. Unless something is done, I certainly intend to call your conduct to his attention. Really, Father Dinian, are you threatening me? With every power at my command, yes. Well, perhaps I'll take your suggestion and call the police. I think you might spare your church the notoriety of a disgraceful scene. My church would be more disgraced if I stood by while you buried my lepers under reports and reports and then pronounced their funeral service with the words, Come back tomorrow. And if something isn't done, I intend to go to the newspapers with every sordid detail about Molokai. The newspapers? Oh, so it's publicity you want, is it? You know better than that, sir. But I'll use any weapon God gives me. Now we'd better reach an understanding right now, Father Damien. We permitted you to go to Molokai to look after the spiritual welfare of the people. The rest of it is none of your affair. I tell you, it's every man's affair. You seem to forget, Father Damien. There's a law forbidding anyone from the leper colony to leave its boundaries. You're here against that law. I'm here to serve a higher law than yours, sir. Well, that won't stop me from having you thrown in jail. Now, will you leave my office, or shall I have you put out? Not until you take care of my people. We've got to have lumber to build houses, pipes for a new water supply, and we've got to have food. Beggars, why don't you grow your own food? You sit here in your cool, comfortable office with your fat belly full. And you ask why men with half-rotted bodies, men with lifeless hands, men too weak to bathe their wretched sores, can't raise their own food. I, I've heard all I want to hear. Yes, you want to get rid of me. Well, here's my report. Approve it and I'll go. Otherwise, there'll be a scandal that will put you out of office. It's... Well, I don't suppose it'll cost too much. Very well, I'll approve it. There. Yeah. And now I expect you to be on the first ship back to Molokai. I'll be on it, all right. And you're not to set your foot off Molokai again. If you keep your bargain, I'll have no need to leave Molokai. If you don't, I'll be back again. Well, I think our business is over. Let's shake hands on it. Shake hands? Don't touch me! Get back to Molokai! With the necessary supplies furnished at last, Father Damien set to work again with hammer and saw, and he helped to build 300 houses on Molokai with his own hands. Day after day, he visited the sick, held religious services, and buried the dead. Two more years passed, and Bishop Magre eagerly read his priest's reports. Well, he seems to be making splendid progress out there by himself, but this last letter seems strange. Brother Paul, he asks for more musical instruments. More musical instruments? What does he want with musical instruments at a leper colony? It does seem odd, but we must try and help him. But you'd think he'd want something more uh, practical. You know... I believe I'll visit Father Damien at Molokai. Oh, but you can't, Your Excellency. The law forbids you to visit the leper colony. I believe now that they've heard so much of Damien's work, they'll relax the law. Surely if he can stay there year after year, I can make a brief visit to encourage him. Let's arrange for it at once. Hey, yes. Uh, do you... Do you want me to go with you, Your Excellency? <laughs> Why, yes, you, you are not afraid, are you, Brother Paul? Well, well, I... I, I uh, no, of course not. I, I, I guess leprosy can be so contagious after all. Uh, he hasn't caught it yet? Make the arrangements and we'll go as quickly as possible. Hmm... How long have you been in Hawaii now, Damien? Let me see. 
Eleven years, I believe. Two years on Molokai. Do you hear from home? Yes. My mother is not so well lately, they tell me. Of course, she's getting along in years. How old is your mother? Seventy-one. Seventy-one this year. <laughs> she's my age, Damien. When you write, give her my greeting. Six years passed, from 1875 to 1881, and slowly the work of the priest was recognized, until one day the lepers at Molokai received a remarkable visit. Princess Liliuo Kalani. Princess, I can't tell you what it means for us to have you visit Molokai. All of Hawaii thanks you for what you've done, Father Danian. After all, I'm only making a very brief visit. You've chosen to stay here through the years. Well, it's an easy choice, Your Highness. This is my work. These unfortunate ones you see, they are my parishioners. Your parishioners and my people. I know there's no reward you desire, Father, but... I ask you to accept the Royal Order of Kalakaua, the highest honor that Hawaii can give you. Thank you, Your Highness. If there's anything else I can do, Father Damien... Perhaps. I... Well, I wonder if you could arrange to have a doctor sent to Molokai. I will do everything I can, Father. I promise you things will be different now that I've seen Molokai and seen your work. You shall have all the help I can give you. I have asked my bishop to send some sisters to help us here. Perhaps they could come if we had a hospital and doctor. You shall have them, Father. I promise you. I will never forget Molokai. Never forget you, Father. But now, I must say aloha. Aloha. Aloha, Your Highness. It was three years before a doctor finally came to stay at the leper colony. As soon as he arrived, he was taken to Damien's cottage. Welcome to Molokai, Doctor. I'm glad to be here, Father Damien. Glad to have a chance to help. I'm sorry I didn't meet you at the boat, Doctor. And, uh... uh oh, oh, sorry. You'll uh, pardon me if I don't shake hands. Well, yes, yes, of course, you but see, I... You see, a few weeks ago, I had a little accident... An accident? It was a strange accident. I was shaving one morning and I spilled some boiling water on my bare feet. Oh, that must have been uh, very painful. No, Doctor. There was no pain at all. No pain? But, but surely you must know... Yes, Doctor. And now that you're here, I suppose we'd better make sure... But, Father, I, uh, there's no need to make sure that copper color of your skin, those swellings. I know, Doctor. When Bishop Maigre heard of Father Damien's condition, he ordered him back to Honolulu to be given special treatments in the hospital there. But after only two weeks had passed, I tell you, I must go back to Molokai, Your Excellency. But you haven't given the treatment a chance, Damien. There's nothing for me to do here, and there's so much to be done on Molokai. So much to be done and so little time. If you insist, I can't deny your wish. Thank you. Then I'll go back to Molokai at once. Well, for years you've been asking me for help at Molokai. Now, because of your illness, I finally managed to arrange it. And we thought we'd have to replace you. I allowed three priests and three sisters to volunteer to take your place. They'll go back to Molokai with you. Thank God, Your Excellency. Now they can carry on my work. Father Damien sailed once more to Molokai. For two more years he lived in the cottage between his church and his graveyard. There in the evening, his friends, the lepers, came to visit him. But month by month he grew weaker. And one night... A coffin was made for him, and the burial associations he had formed accompanied him to a grave in the shadow of the old tree on the hill where he had first found refuge 
when he came to Molokai. His favorite hymn echoed across the island once more. When, oh when, shall it be given to me to behold my God? How long shall I be captive in this strange land? And the bell he placed with his own hands on the little chapel echoed around the world. It echoes yet across the years, echoes the words that were spoken of him. Aloha oi, Damien, valiant soldier of Christ, salvation of Molokai, honor of Belgium, glory of the church, radiance of God, aloha oi. <laughs> 